Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, overtly stated that television was the major mainstream infiltration for the new satanic religion. LaVey boastfully acknowledges the effectiveness TV has had in transforming us. The TV set, or satanic family altar, has grown more elaborate since the early 50s, from the tiny fuzzy screen to huge entertainment centers covering entire walls with several TV monitors. What started as an innocent respite from everyday life has become in itself a replacement for real life for millions, a major religion of the masses. Magic only exists if you allow it, if you open yourself up to the possibility of, you know. With a slew of successful movies under his belt, actor Johnny Depp confesses, I know I have demons. I'm 30 different people sometimes. From Genesis and the Garden of Eden to the Book of Revelation, we have the divine record of Satan and his evil spirits channeling through other beings. In Genesis, Satan used a serpent to spin his age-old lies that humans can become God, that there is no death, and that one may expand their consciousness to realize such godhood through partaking of forbidden occult knowledge. It is not a coincidence that these same three basic lies form the foundation of the New Age movement today. Anton LaVey admitted that the heart of the New Age movement was really Satanism. He said, In the scores of books lining the shelves of New Age bookstores, there are instructions for guided meditations, creative visualizations, out-of-body experiences, getting in touch with your spirit guides, fortune-telling by cards, crystal balls, or the stars. What if Satanists reclaimed these for their own dark purposes and integrated them into rituals dedicated to the devil where they rightfully belong? New Agers have freely drawn upon all manner of satanic material, adapting it to their own hypocritical purposes. But in truth, all New Age labeling is again trying to play the devil's game without taking his infernal name. I am God. I am God. I am I God. God. I am God. I am God. I am God. After the advent of television, Satan was able to deceptively present his old venue to the public and as a result unraveled much of the Judeo-Christian ethic in the West that took nearly 2,000 years to establish and brought about a paradigm shift to New Age thinking in only a few short decades. And who are in reality servants of Satan? Paul wrote, They have fooled you by masquerading, but I am not surprised. Even Satan can masquerade himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants can also do it by pretending. In the end, they will get every bit of punishment their wicked deeds deserve. To masquerade means to cover with a mask or disguise. The Greek word is used in the Old Testament in the Septuagint of the demon-possessed King Saul, who disguised himself by putting on other clothes when seeking a channeled spirit through the witch of Endor. In Jesus' day, actors were people in the heathen nations who would put on masks of the false gods they worshipped in an attempt to portray them. The better they could portray a particular deity, the better an actor they were. They were the absolute best actors when they were possessed by that demon god and could channel for him, emulating his true character. Danny Glover was Paul D. First day, when she says, Paul D, is that you? I, I couldn't even like hold myself inside my body. It was un unbelievable. What we will see is that not much has changed from then to now other than the intensity and breadth of the movement to destroy the souls of men and women. Aleister Crowley, considered to be the chief Satanist of the 20th century, wrote of the best way to practice becoming possessed in his book, Magic in Theory and Practice. Crowley writes, there are three main methods for invoking any deity. The third method is the dramatic, perhaps the most attractive of all. Certainly it is so to the artist's temperament, for it appeals to his imagination through his aesthetic sense. He goes on to explain the dramatic method. In the third method, identity is attained by sympathy. It is very difficult for the ordinary man to lose himself completely in the subject of a play. But for those who can do so, this method is unquestionably the best. The foremost Satanist taught that the best way to experience demonic possession was to act in a play, or in our day's terms, a movie. <laughs> Konstantin Stanislavski, considered by many to be the father of several modern acting techniques, including the method, resurrected many of these ancient ideas and has initiated countless actors and actresses over the last hundred years into these occult ideologies. Stanislavski stated that nine-tenths of acting a role out was based on a spiritual experience in which the actor was to be transformed into someone else. Other popular forms of acting similarly involve occult principles whereby one is able to open themselves up to be possessed and taken over. As 
you shall clearly see, Hollywood is a breeding ground for the activity of demonic and lying spirits. The most famous celebrities of the 20th and now 21st centuries were and are being used to teach and reshape the moral compass of the world in preparation for the new age under the Antichrist. The whole reason for this video is in accordance with what the Bible says. Don't be partakers in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. And that's exactly what this video is. It's an expose. It's to show people what's going on behind the scenes because you're not going to see this on Extra or Entertainment Tonight or 60 Minutes. All this information right here is, are, are things that are they're being kind of pushed off to the side or hidden from people. It says in the Bible that as Christians, we're not supposed to be ignorant of Satan's schemes, but sadly, many people are ignorant of Satan's schemes and how he works. Because the ultimate reality, again, Ephesians 6.12 says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but of rulers, authorities, and powers in the spiritual realms, in the heavenly realms. It's important to understand that Satan's MO throughout human history has been to work through people, what the Bible calls sons of disobedience, those who are in rebellion to God, Satan will use to draw others away from God and to harden their hearts against God. In fact, it's not just present day that we're talking about. We have to look back to see where this new. And it was inevitable that the free love and liberated sex of the counterculture became keystones for the mainstream pop culture. The 1960s witnessed a topsy-turvy occult infiltration based on the mechanics of Crowley's axiom, do what thou wilt. The 1960s movement specifically affected the youth of the country and spawned the eclectic hippie movement that has put on a different social mask in our day. After the foundation had been laid through the 1950s and most of the nation was ready for revolution, Satan turned up the heat in the 1960s and set into motion his plan of deceiving the hearts of the nation. We're in the uh, very throes of a new satanic age. The evidence is all around us. All we have to do is look at it. After the Church of Satan was established, Anton LaVey opened a film office where he could instruct and guide popular filmmakers. LaVey specifically targeted Hollywood to become his primary means for satanic evangelism. Quick to participate, many celebrities were devout, outspoken supporters for the Church of Satan and its causes. Kim Novak, Jane Mansfield, Tina Louise, and Sammy Davis Jr. are a few who openly lent their fame to the satanic agenda in the 1960s. We are superior by the imagination, the creativity that is the heart and the very soul of the Satanist. Anton LaVey praised the work that celebrities have done for Satan's kingdom. You've got quite a legacy of satanic writers, film producers, and directors who have made their own packs. They've proven themselves to be cunning, wit, and courage beyond the best of their time. These people that have sold their souls for fame, power, and fortune are being used to push the New Age philosophies, or as what Anton LaVey refers to as the new satanic religion. Sammy Davis Jr. was a notable actor in Hollywood and most well known for his then risque Rat Pack shows. Anton LaVey declared Sammy Davis Jr. was a dear friend and often put himself on the line when it was professionally hazardous to do so. He brought many influential persons into the Church of Satan and shared his own personal life with me. He was a sensitive, articulate, and very satanic individual. During his Rat Pack shows, Davis would use the stage as a podium to plug psychics and praise the mysterious messages he received through them from the other side. Another actress of the 1960s was Jane Mansfield. She also enveloped herself in witchcraft and black magic and was escalated to the position of high priestess within the Church of Witchcraft and Black Magic and was escalated to the position of high priestess within the Church of Satan. More than anything else, Mansfield wanted success as a movie star. LaVey recalled telling Mansfield that her dreams were attainable through satanic power. The devil has supreme power on this earth, he said. If you want anything here, the devil can give it to you if you join him. Mansfield became one of the most popular and talked about actresses of the 1950s and 1960s. Her movies were replete with risque sex and immorality for her day. I wasn't a stranger to permitting my bus to be photographed. <laughs> I had already done that. Here's the Playboy issue, which shows the movie I was in, Promises, Promises. It showed just about everything that Jane Mansfield had to show. Mansfield sold out to the principles of the Satanic Bible and expressed them in her films. LaVey says, Jane was very proud of the fact that if she liked something enough, she would commit it to memory. At the time, the Satanic Bible was still in monograph form. Jane had poured over those pages until she knew most of it by heart. Which Happy. Star Trek is a cultural icon, and it's part of the lexicon now. Replete with New Age iconography, 
The Star Trek shows categorically deal with issues such as telekinesis, mental telepathy, atheism, psychic phenomena, channeling, mind transference, entities cohabiting the same body, and other occult themes and ideologies that were strung throughout the series. The creator of the rage, Gene Roddenberry, is responsible for much of the current space age mania that has become ingrained within the culture today. Star Trek's a way of life, man. It's a good way of life. It's, it teaches us all. Not surprisingly, Roddenberry had zero regard for Christ and was dead set on establishing a new age of thought that countered scripture with his cinema creations. In fact, Roddenberry recalled his Christian upbringing with disdain. I had never really paid much attention to the church sermon before. I was more interested in the deacon's daughter and what we might be doing between services. I listened to the sermon and I remember complete astonishment because what they were talking about were things that were just crazy. Roddenberry bought into the New Age lie that we could become gods and expressed these thoughts through characters and stories on his shows. Roddenberry said, It's not the Judeo-Christian God. Creating Star Trek was a very spiritual experience. It's my world. It's that divinity in us that we call God. Cosmic thoughts, gentlemen. We were speculating. Is God really out there? Maybe he's not out there, Bones. Maybe he's right here. Human heart. The storylines that made Roddenberry famous were in fact given to him in conduit fashion from the demonic kingdom. Recounting his role as a medium, he states, What happens is that I bring them out into this world, the world of humanity, and they take their place among them, among us. But I don't think I create them. They already exist. I just introduce them. That's really where the whole idea of Star Trek came from. I'm just a vehicle, a transporter. <laughs> The secular philosopher Socrates insightfully explained acting's essential spirit contact and possession. In like manner, the muse first of all inspires men because they are inspired and possessed. They are simply inspired to utter that which the muse impels them. For not by art or knowledge do you say what you say, but by possession. Socrates had a common understanding of the demonic power utilized by actors. This muse, or giver of creative inspiration, as shown through Socrates' statements, has always been perceived as a spirit. Anton LaVey of the Church of Satan instructs his followers and clarifies this fact. Keep yourself constantly open to the demons who will whisper in your ear. An old meaning of demon used to be closer to muse, a guiding inspirational spirit. The muses, or demons, are still at work today. Alexander Rose, the co-producer for The Other Sister, championed actress Juliette Lewis's ability to be totally taken over. Of Lewis, Rose says this. She just has that ability to transcend the reality of the moment and become the vessel for the muse. When she's acting, she is not Juliette Lewis. That to me is the sign of a really great actor. When you can let the muse take over, you look into their eyes and no one's home. Kevin Bacon relates. Part of acting is to lose yourself in the moment, to let the chaos or the muse come and just enter and happen organically. Bacon also attributes his successful acting to demons under the surface and as an actor, you have to keep them bubbling. The Matrix is Keanu Reeves who talks of having taken what he calls demon rides, says, It's hard to act in the morning. The muse isn't even awake. His series The Matrix is a hit with the youth and is filled with New Age preaching. Satan wants these philosophies to be presented in an acceptable light and is empowering Reeves to evangelize the children. Director Taylor Hackford revealed, Keanu is a very complex guy with lots of demons in him, and I was trying to tap and utilize that. anyone I've ever met. Harry's amazing. Frighteningly, Satan's doctrines are taking root because people are not guarding themselves or their children against the schemes of the devil. Wicked. LeVay tells us how late in the game it is with our kids. He says, there's no need for packs with the devil anymore. These kids are already aligned with satanic forces. Okay. Our freedom. Do not stand in our way. The church, the state, hormones will decide my fate. The church. The day is coming. We, you know, we're gonna like them. We're gonna do them. Uh, we're gonna take our freedom by any means necessary. I will do whatever I have to do to keep to stay free. If it's a choice between me staying alive and free and somebody else not staying alive, I'm willing to make that choice too. We're young. We're grand. We're gonna rule the world. I, mean, I think uh, it should be brought out that we not only condone but we encourage all types of what would be called sexual perversities and deviations because. We feel that in a few short years it will be established that everyone is a sexual deviant, pervert, fetishist. We're happy to be here. We feel that historically we are part of this movement for liberation. 
all my life been attracted to younger boys. I love them. <laughs> How do I make myself attractive to boys? We feel a person should be free to indulge in all of the so-called fetishes, all of the so-called uh, uh, admirations that they would so desire. Through the decades, Hollywood has fueled the fires of this lie by peddling greater and greater waves of filth to numb our consciences. And like the frog in the proverbial pot, we are almost cooked. True freedom comes by turning from sin to Jesus Christ, who gives the abundant life. Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. We ought not to, according to the scripture, if we know that it's wrong. The Bible says what's not of faith is sin. And so if we can't watch something in faith and we can't watch it with a good conscience, we really shouldn't set it before our eyes. The Lord would not have us do it. Some people feel that's a bummer, like, well, there's only some things wrong, you know, with certain shows. There's only a little bit wrong here or there. There's a story of a father who taught a lesson to his kids one time. The kids came to him and they said, Dad, we want to go see a PG-13 movie. And the dad said, is it, is it clean? And the kid said, well, there's a few things that are wrong with it. You know, it's not perfect. And the dad said, well, then you probably shouldn't go see it. And he said, dad, it's only a little bit. It's only a little bit of stuff. And the dad said, okay, how about before you guys go, we bake some cookies? The kid said, yeah, let's do it. So they bake the cookies, they whip them up in the bowl. And just before they put them in the oven, the dad goes in the backyard and he gets some dog poo from the backyard. He puts it in the bowl, he mixes it in there. He puts it in, them in the oven, bakes the cookies, pulls them out, puts them on a plate, and serves them to the kids. And the kids say, Dad, <laughs> are you nuts? We're not going to touch this. And Dad says, why not? And the kids go, Dad, there's dog poo in these cookies. Why would we eat this? And the dad goes, yeah, but it's just a little bit. It's not a lot. It's only a little bit. And oftentimes, I think the Lord would say that to us. It's a little bit. But in other areas of our lives, we wouldn't even think about touching it. But it's easy to make exceptions and compromise sometimes with these things. Scriptures instruct us to stop loving this evil world and all that it offers you. For when you love the world, you show that you do not have the love of the Father in you. For the world offers only the lust for physical pleasure, the lust for everything we see, and pride in our possessions. These are not from the Father. They are from this evil world and this world is fading away, along with everything it craves. But if you do the will of God, you will live forever. Leave your confusing ways behind you and begin to live. Parents, we need to guard our children now more than ever from these kidnappers of the mind and heart who smuggle death into their lives without remorse. Can we tell our parents? No! Even the one who claims to be the representative for Satan on this earth, Anton LaVey, proactively guards his son. When he was asked if he let his son watch TV, LaVey replied, no. He can when he's old enough, if he goes into it warned. Does a Satanist have more scruples than a Christian parent who follows the Bible, which is the best written book for parenting ever comprised? God tells us. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the message God has planted in your hearts. And remember, it is a message to obey, not just listen to. If you don't obey, you are only fooling yourself. Unfortunately, those who are entertained by spirits working through movie stars are being entertained directly by mediums. However, the Lord has set down specific unchanging instructions for all of humanity. He warns against mediums, saying, As for the person who turns to mediums and to spiritists to play the harlot after them, I will also set my face against that person and will cut him off from among his people. God prohibits turning to mediums, not because he is a cosmic killjoy, but because he loves us and wants to protect us. Hollywood is nothing but a repository of lies. Mel Gibson says, actors are all basically liars. Janine Garofalo says, Hollywood is built on lies, conning the American public like politics. Director Brian De Palma says, the camera lies all the time, 24 times per second. Marlon Brando explains how they are all liars. It makes me so sick. It's amazing, the people in the movie industry. The scriptures have foretold with amazing accuracy the growing rebellion against the faith that is culminating for the end times. Paul writes, the spirit clearly says that in later times some will abandon the faith and follow deceiving spirits and things taught by demons. We have already seen that the word for actor is hypocrite and that they and their Hollywood institution are leading the world astray through their lies. 
How then will these demons get their messages out to turn away people from the faith and follow after them? The very next verse tells us, such teachings come through hypocritical liars whose consciences have been seared as with the hot iron. Hollywood is being utilized as an end time propaganda machine of destruction as it teaches its demonic doctrines and lays waste those of God. This direct assault on God leaves you an active participant to one side or another. The scripture says that you cannot eat at the table of God and the table of demons. It's accepted by acting musicians, everybody else will follow. Everybody else 